Hi, I'm Tom, and in this video I'm going to talk about my stupid big boiler and the importance of correct boiler sizing. If you're thinking of replacing your gas boiler, you'll probably want to watch this video. I had a brand new heating system installed back in 2021, back before I knew anything about heating, and aside from heating the existing house, we knew we wanted to do an extension, so we asked our plumber to factor that in when he was designing the system. The plumber recommended a 30 kilowatt boiler and told us that we'd have plenty heat, plenty hot water and it would easily deal with uh, any extensions or any changes to the size of the house. In the end, he actually installed a 35 kilowatt boiler, which I didn't discover until a couple of months ago. Now, what I didn't realize at the time was that 35 kilowatts was an insane amount of heat. It's absolutely absurd uh, for a four bedroom house. I've learned that when you install a heating system that's bigger than your requirements, it's called oversizing. Oversizing, as I've learned, is bad for two reasons. Firstly, you're paying for a much more powerful piece of hardware that uh, it's going to emit more power than you'll actually use and it's kind of like buying an Aston Martin to do the one mile school run. Uh, secondly, in addition to the much higher maximum power, you end up having a much higher minimum power. And let me explain what that means. Modern gas boilers can do something called modulation and that's where they can adjust their output uh, based on the demands. Modulation is very important as it provides maximum efficiency and maximum performance from your boiler. For example, my boiler can go from 35 kilowatts at its maximum output all the way down to about 5 kilowatts at its minimum output. But before I look at the 5 kilowatt output figure I want to focus on the 35 kilowatt output figure. So to give you a sense of how absolutely ridiculous 35 kilowatts is for a house of my size, I thought it would be interesting to do some, some sort of silly scenarios and just look at that figure of 35 kilowatts and put it into some better context. For the sticklers amongst you, I have to point out that I, what I'm speaking about here is a system boiler and I have a separate hot water tank. The sizing of a combi boiler is very, very different because that's heating water instantaneously. So they're typically a lot larger than they need to be. And that depends on how much water you need, uh, hot water you need at any particular time. So with those caveats out of the way, uh, let's take a look at my house as it currently stands. I've added quite a bit of insulation to my house over the past couple of years. So when it's minus three degrees outside, my boiler only needs to put in about seven kilowatts to keep the house at a cozy 20 degrees. That's a heat loss figure of around 300 watts per degree of difference. My 35 kilowatt beast of a boiler won't even break a sweat providing seven kilowatts because that's about 20% of its maximum output. That means that if it was running at 100% of its capacity, all 35 kilowatts, it could heat five houses the same size as this one. Five. Five houses. My boiler is big enough to heat five houses. But let's take that ridiculousness uh, a little further. There are about 70 houses on my street so if we imagine each house on my street has a boiler similar size, that would give us a total maximum output of 2.5 megawatts of heat. Megawatts of heat. That's enough to heat 350 houses that are the same size as this one. If we put that another way, we would only need 14 boilers of that size to provide all the heat for every house on this street. That's absolute madness. So let's go back to my house. And we've already seen that when it's minus three outside, I only need seven kilowatts to keep the house at 20 degrees inside. Let's imagine it gets a bit colder outside and we'll take it down to minus 10. 
which I don't think would ever happen uh, where I live, but at minus 10, our heat loss becomes nine kilowatts. That's not even a third of what the boiler can output, so very comfortably can keep the house warm when it's minus 10. Minus 20, we're still naughty. We're, we're still, we're at about a third, roughly, of the boiler's maximum output. No problem keeping the house warm with that. Let's take it a bit further. Minus 50, okay, our heat loss is now 21 kilowatts. Still, the boiler, no problems. Not even, about two, say about two thirds of the output, uh, maximum output of the boiler, no problem. In fact, the boiler is so powerful that the temperature outside would need to get down to minus 95 before the boiler would actually be at its maximum. Minus 95. Now, I think that's day after tomorrow temperatures. It's like bananas. It's never going to happen at minus 95. I don't think the size of my boiler is going to be my biggest concern. Now, my house was built in sort of 1958, 1959. It's built with pretty standard construction techniques. It's got suspended, uh, suspended floors, cavity walls, typical roof construction. So everything is, was pretty standard construction techniques at the time. I've since added quite a lot of insulation to the property. I've insulated the suspended floors. I've had cavity wall insulation, I've topped up the loft insulation, and I've done a lot to improve the overall air tightness of the building. Some of you might say that my boiler is now only oversized because I've added all this extra insulation to the building and I've improved the air tightness and everything. So I'd like to look at that particular uh, aspect uh, using another kind of ridiculous example. What would happen if my house was instead built entirely of plywood. So existing windows and doors, keep them the same, but instead of the cavity wall, I just replace it with, we'll say, 24 mil plywood. Now 24 mil plywood has a heat loss or a U-value figure of about uh, five watts per meter. So it's, it's pretty leaky. Timber is quite a good conductor, as I've learned. So what would that do to the heat loss figure of my house? So at minus three outside, my beautiful plywood house would only need 28 kilowatts of heat. So my boiler is still oversized by about 20%. So if I went in the opposite direction and I used 100 mil of solid PIO instead of the plywood, my heat loss would only be three kilowatts and my boiler would then only be 10 times too big. To heat the house. Now obviously these numbers aren't the most rigorous application you'll have seen of heat loss but they do serve to highlight just how ridiculously absurd 35 kilowatts of heat is for a house of this size. So let's now go back to that 5 kilowatt figure I mentioned earlier and talk about how important modulation is. Modern modulating boilers can alter their output between a maximum value and a minimum value. Now that's typically expressed in a percentage. So you've got 100% at one end and then a minimum uh, percentage at the other end. So in the case of my boiler, at 100% we've got 35 kilowatts and at the lower end it's about 15%. So that works out roughly at about five kilowatts. So as you saw in the earlier slides, the colder it is, the more heat we need to put into the house to maintain it at its temperature. But the opposite is also true. So the warmer it is outside, the less heat we need to put in to maintain the temperature inside the house. And that is one of the reasons that boilers modulate. Why would a boiler need to output all 35 kilowatts of heat if I only need seven kilowatts of heat to keep me nice and warm? But a problem arises when this happens. Let's say it's 10 degrees outside and my house only needs three kilowatts of heat to keep it cozy at 20 degrees. But that's less than the minimum output of my boiler. Now what normally happens in that situation is that the boiler will do something called cycling. Essentially, the boiler will recognize that it's putting in more heat than the house can actually kind of consume. And it will turn itself off 
to prevent itself from overheating. Now it will keep circulating the water around the radiators and when the water coming back to the boiler is cold enough, the boiler will turn its flame on and it'll start heating that water again, at which point after a little period of time it'll decide that it's putting out too much heat and it will turn itself off. One of the main problems with cycling is that when the boiler restarts it'll typically ramp itself up to its maximum power and then it will kind of figure out what's happening as the water starts to return and then it will begin to modulate back down. So you'll have this you'll have this kind of cycle where it's going from maximum maximum power then it will modulate down, then it will turn itself off. Then it will go to maximum power, modulate down, then it will turn itself off. And we just repeat that uh, across the course of the day. One of the main issues with the boiler ramping up to 100% is that it's obviously burning a lot of gas before it decides it needs to modulate down and that's costing you money and it's affecting the boiler's overall performance. There's also an increase in the wear and tear because things are starting and stopping and opening and closing so that doesn't do much for the health of your boiler and the overall longevity of your boiler. It also has an impact on your comfort um, as the air temperature doesn't fluctuate as much when the radiators are emitting a steady stream of heat all the time. So by reducing the amount of cycling you'll improve your comfort, you'll improve the efficiency of your boiler and you'll reduce how much you spend heating your house. Now let's go back to 2021 uh, when my plumber is kind of designing my new heating system and let's imagine that he did a heat loss survey, so he figured out what the actual demands of my property were, how much heat I actually needed based on the weather and what we call a design operating temperature. And imagine that after he'd done all his, his numbers, he decided that I only needed a 15 kilowatt boiler. Uh, we would end up with a situation like this where we've got uh, 15 kilowatts at one end and our maximum output and with the same modulation ratio of 15 percent that boiler would be able to lower its output down as far as two kilowatts now other boiler manufacturers will have different ratios uh, some in fact can get down as low as 10 percent so for this exact same uh, output we could get a minimum down as little as 1.5 kilowatts. So at a minimum output of 2 kilowatts, that boiler would have been able to run continuously without cycling until the outside temperature got above 14 degrees, which is pretty warm uh, for a winter's day. So we, we wouldn't experience that uh, very often, which would mean that my boiler would be cycling a lot less. Now I mentioned the term heat loss a couple of times during this video so if you are doing anything in terms of getting a new boiler or upgrading a heating system a, a proper heat loss survey is really really important because it will give the installer an idea of how much heat your house actually needs to keep you warm and that will mean that they can choose a boiler that's more appropriately sized so you will you won't suffer from uh, too much power and you'll also benefit from that modulation range so you'll be much more comfortable you'll spend less money both purchasing the, the boiler and running the boiler over the long term so if you're planning on upgrading or replacing your boiler be sure to ask your installer how they're planning to size the boiler are they are they eyeballing it like my plumber did three years ago or are they going down a more rigorous route of doing a proper heat loss survey and coming up with a, a properly sized boiler not too big not too small uh, in my opinion having a, a, pro a properly sized boiler will just save you money and just keep you more comfortable in the long run if like me you already have an oversized boiler there are some things you can do to try to mitigate the fact that it's way too big 
So for example, I've done something called range rating on my boiler, and that is where I've taken the maximum, uh, the maximum output, and I've told the boiler not to put out more than 50% of its power. Now, obviously it's still way too big, you know, at 17 and a half kilowatts being 50% of its output. But what it does mean is when it's cycling and it's ramping itself up to its maximum, as I explained, it will only ramp itself up to 50% of its maximum. So in that way, I am saving gas uh, because the boiler is not going up to 35 kilowatts when it cycles. It's only going up to 17 and a half. So that has had an impact and I could see the reduction in my overall gas usage as soon as I had made that change to my boiler. If you'd like some more maybe spe specific help, um, just leave, a, leave me a comment and I'll see if I can't find out how to do it for your boiler or see if there's any, it's anything else that specifically you can do to your boiler. Right, I think that's enough ranting for me for one video. If you've enjoyed this, please remember to like and subscribe. If you've any questions, as I mentioned, please do use the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. Otherwise, that's it. I'm Tom and thanks for watching.